What's Shaking Fire Nation? JLD here with an audio masterclass on the importance of growing a global brand. And to rock the mic today, I have brought Neil Patel. He's a New York Times bestselling author and co-founder of Neil Patel Digital. And Fire Nation, we're going to talk today about how to know which markets to enter. How do you enter a market where you don't physically have a presence? What about ensuring the quality of work in a language you don't speak? the importance of understanding new market and competition before entering it, and so much more when we get back from thanking our sponsor. The biggest needle mover in my business, funnels. The software I use to build my funnels, ClickFunnels, no question. Visit eofire.com slash click to start your free 14-day trial today. That's eofire.com slash click. Growing businesses need qualified candidates, and qualified candidates can be a challenge to find. Lucky for us, ZipRecruiter makes it simple, fast, and smart. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Neil, say what's up to Fire Nation, and share something interesting about yourself that most people don't know. Hey, everyone at Fire Nation. I'm excited to be here. I'm actually lucky and privileged to be here and talking to you guys. And something unique about me is I'm very OCD. Like, you know when people go to the airport and they make you take off your shoes (laughs) and you just walk through with your socks? I have booties to go over my socks so that way... (laughs) My socks don't get dirty. <laughs> Brother, you just need to get TSA pre check They don't make us take our shoes off anymore. I have TSA pre check but it doesn't work internationally. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I definitely did not know that about you, but I can see that because I, I don't like doing that at all either. I haven't taken it that far, but... I can see myself wanting to do that at some point. And Fire Nation, as I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be talking today about the importance of growing a global brand. And Neil has some killer value bombs he's going to be dropping on us. And let's just kick it off, Neil. I mean, how the heck would we even start as entrepreneurs? How do we know what markets to enter? The easiest thing to do is look at your revenue what places are you generating revenue from outside of your main market? So let's say your main core market is the United States, because I'm assuming a lot of your uh, listeners are US based. Yeah. Then you would look at your sales, whether it's services or e-commerce to be like, what other regions are they coming from outside of the United States and which ones are the strongest? You can also look at your Google analytics and see where you're getting traffic from outside of the United States. Cause they'll show you all the other geographies and then you can look them up based on their population count, based on GDP, and figure out, all right, which countries have a high GDP, have a high population count, and we're already making somewhat money there. That's typically where you want to go first for expansion. Fire Nation, high GDP, high population count. These are key areas. These are critical locations and actually things to focus on before you go into any of these markets. But Neil, I love getting specific. I love going down to that granular level. So how do we actually enter a market if we don't have a physical presence in it? So we've kind of identified that market to enter, but now how do we do it? Expanding internationally, most people look at it as like, oh, global expansion, this is so expensive. Yeah, if you do it the way that the Microsofts of the world or the Samsungs do it, yes, it definitely is expensive. So what I would recommend for Fire Nation is you should first build up the traffic. See, you're looking for high GDP, you're looking for high population, and you're already looking for the countries where you already have traffic from. When they meet those three criteria, you can consider going after them. The big mistake people make is they look at high GDP per capita. You know, Qatar has a great GDP per capita, but the population is too small. Avoid the high GDPs per capita. Look for the other three metrics. Once you've identified those places, the simplest thing you can do is Take your most popular pages on your site and translate them. So you can go to Upwork, you can find people who know that language, who can translate and transcribe your content. You don't want them to just translate, you also want them to transcribe. The difference is they have to adapt it to that local region. Once they have that, you can upload the content to your site. And I know many of you guys are worried about like, oh, Google, duplicate content, social media. None of these players penalize for duplicate content. 
there's something you put in your meta tags called href lang. That's H R E F L A N G. Google it. There'll be sites that give you a tool that you just pick what your URL is, what one you translated, what country you're going after, and it'll give you this code that you put in your code. Uh, and then what ends up, or technically it gives you this code that you put in your HTML. And then what ends up happening is Google and other sources and platforms now know, hey, these are your pages for English. These is your these are your pages for France, right, or whatever region that you're picking. And then you'll notice that all those other regions, not only will they start getting traffic, but it happens quite quickly because even if they have a good GDP and a high population and they're a first world country, it's typically not as competitive as, let's say, the U.S. market. First, build up the traffic fire nation. And then I love how you said go to Upwork and translate and transcribe. Because think about a fire nation, straight translations, they don't work because people have slang. They have a certain way they say things. And if you just translate straight English to straight, you know, say whatever language it might be, French, etc., it's not going to come across as authentic. And people don't want to read inauthentic, ungenuine stuff. Just like we don't like watching movies that are dubbed voices. We don't like reading stuff that's just been dubbed. We want the actual transcribing to be happening. So definitely love that. And that tool that Neil mentioned again, that's H-R-E-F Lang, L-A-N-G. So just Google it. And then you're going to get a code, put it in the HTML. And so Google knows the pages for the different languages that you have going on. And Neil... I love how you don't just talk to talk. You actually walk the walk. So you've done this, brother. Give us an example of a time and a place and a location and a language and a country that you've done something like this. Yeah, so we're international quite a bit. We've done it for more than one language and country. Uh, But a good example, the first one we ever did was Brazil. So we have an office in Belo Horizonte. I don't even know how to say it right. Uh, (laughs) But Brazil is our uh, number two traffic source. United States, wow. then Brazil, then India, and then there's a few other regions. We have an office there. We have a team there. But what we first did is built up the traffic, used the process that John and I just talked about. And then from there, once the traffic came in, we started collecting leads. We hired one or two people to close business for us, and then we slowly expanded. And then we even got an office. We didn't get the office from day one or – spend all this money. We're like, Hey, let's just get some traffic and leads and let's see if people will pay us. And then if they will, we've proved this out. Now let's expand faster and just go all in. So how do you understand the market and the competition of that market before you actually enter it? So like for your example in Brazil, I mean, how did you actually understand what that market was and what the competition was before you entered? What steps did you take? Well, most markets that you go into, there will be very little competition. Even if you go into the Germany's of the world, the France's, the Japan's, you know, countries with amazing GDP. I mean, is America really the only high competition country or are there some others? No, there's a ton. You can consider Germany and France and all those competitive. But when I mean they're not that competitive, I'm like, the U.S. is two, three, four times harder in most cases. Okay. Is there any country that even comes close? No, I would say number two would be the UK. The UK. And typically it's double as easy to get results in the UK as it is to get results in the US. Well, and they have one tenth of the population too, which hurts. Yeah. And then the, Germany was roughly 5x easier than it was to get results in the US. Uh, Brazil for us was around maybe 15, 20 times easier than the U.S. So give an example of an entrepreneur that might be listening right now. And by example, I mean, somebody's listening, they're doing something like kind of like describe this avatar, this person that might want to do this that we've been talking about, that might want to enter a market in a different country. What steps would that individual take and why would they want to do it? For Fire Nation, I'm assuming a lot of people who listen to Fire Nation may have a bootstrap business. Um, they could be selling courses, ebooks, subscriptions, maybe have ads on their website. Is that correct demographic? Very accurate, yes. Okay. So what I would actually do is I would pick a region, right, based on the criteria that we already gave earlier and throw up some Facebook ads and see if you can just pay someone really quickly to translate and transcribe your stuff and see how much revenue you can end up generating. And then once you start seeing the income get in and you know it works, 
then just go out there and start translating your content and transcribing it as well. Uh, and then just go all in. But a quick test is to just go and run some Facebook ads for a few pages of your product and just see how many sales that you can generate. We also tried this out in Brazil and we found out that it's less competitive. The ad costs are a lot lower. Uh, to give you an idea, we spent uh, around $4,000. I'm converting it. So we spent $4,000, not reais, that's their currency, but we spent $4,000 on ads and we generated a bit more than $60,000 in ebook sales to wow. give you an idea of how competitive it is. And check this out. It was a Neil Patel product, which I'm a personal brand. I don't speak Portuguese. Some guys from Brazil that I know did the webinar. They pitched the product. Their internet sucked. They were down for the first five, seven minutes of the webinar. Still generated $60,000 plus. Dollars. That's after refunds. That's after uh, merchant fees and everything. I mean, Fire Nation... These are the kind of areas you need to be thinking about if your business is stagnating right now. I mean, I can remember so clearly back in 2013, 2014, 2015, I would just like mention like to Kate that we should have a webinar and like I'd have 200 people sign up for it and then 150 people show up live from that. I mean, it was just like the subscription rate, the the show up rate, the conversions on those, I mean, are absol- were absolutely astronomical. I mean, we would do consistently 20, 30, 40 K on a webinar running almost no to very little ads. Now, I mean, it is unbelievable how hard it is to get people on a live webinar. The conversions are way down. It's just a lot busier. It's a lot crazier. It's so much more competitive now in the United States market. And now you can go out to places like Brazil, like Neil's talking about, and you can be going back to like the 2013, 14, 15 timeframe that the U.S. had now in 2019, 2020, and beyond. So, Neil, little off topic here, but if Fire Nation is just like, you know what? I don't actually really have something right now that I'm focused on. I'm kind of a blank slate. What would you recommend to somebody who is a blank slate right now and they haven't necessarily started becoming an influencer or an authority figure? They don't necessarily have a focused product yet. What would you do if you were really just starting off today with nothing, with no experience, uh, with no experience, no influence, with no followers to really get moving in a foreign country? I would go do the same process, start with Upwork. I wouldn't even build up my brand in the United States. I would pick another region and just go after it because what? it's 10 times easier. To give you an idea, one of my buddies in Brazil, uh, he's married and his wife has a site called Esposas Online. Like it talks about running a good household, uh, decorations, bedding, all that kind of stuff. She built no links. She wrote, you know, less than 30 pieces of content and she just gets a hundred thousand plus unique visitors a month. Wow. And has very little social presence, wasn't ever known. And she's not this rare person where everyone's like, oh my God, we all want to strive for her. This is what's considered the common example when most people start sites in some of these regions. Now, you don't make as much per visitor, but that's okay. These regions are growing really fast. Uh, each visitor is becoming worth more and more over time really quickly. So you just have to be patient. What's an example of like a product or a service that you would launch knowing what you know in Brazil if you had you know, limited funds, you just had your knowledge right now, but not a ton of extra cash? I would do ebooks and courses. The reason being is Brazil lacks uh, proper education. Yeah, they have schools and they have colleges, but they're not as great as people or the people who live there want. For that reason, they're much more uh, heavy into buying online courses and training and education. They continually do that. So obviously you said India is like the third for you, but what are some other regions that really excite you outside of what we've mentioned already as far as countries that you think really are up and coming? Yeah, we've been doing really well in Japan, Germany, um, UK, of course. Uh, France has been growing really fast. Italy as well. Uh, Netherlands has been doing really well for us. Have you ever tried Chile? We are, we're actually in all of Latin America. So uh, uh-huh. Chile, Argentina, um, but out of all the Spanish countries, Spain and Mexico are working extremely well. Argentina and Chile, they're decent, uh, but 
Mexico and Spain are producing much better results, not just for me, but for most people that I know that are entering this managed markets. And what are you kind of seeing as far as trends right now? Like what's trending in these different countries that really kind of has you excited about content or courses or eBooks or just something completely different? Take what worked in the US two, three years ago. That'll work in almost all of these countries today. I mean, that's the thing, Fire Nation. You're seeing the future. If you have had your finger on the pulse in the U.S. five, six, four, three years ago, again, webinars, live webinars, crushing it back in 2014. You couldn't do a live webinar and not you know, do pretty decent if you had a decent webinar, a decent pitch, a decent product. And now it is really really difficult, but different countries, different results. And if you think Neil's done dropping value bombs, you're mistaken. We're going to have some more when we get back from thanking our sponsor. Ever felt like your hiring process is inefficient and like you're struggling to grow your company to its potential? If so, you're not alone. Take this case study from Fred, founder and CEO of Finder. Finder helps people make more informed financial decisions by providing comparisons of personal finance products like credit cards and insurance. Fred wanted to staff up quickly after launching in the US, but finding qualified matches from other sites was challenging and his recruiting process was disorganized. ZipRecruiter's platform centralizes hiring and their AI-driven matching technology helped Fred to find more quality candidates fast. He was able to scale his staff from zero to 12 in a matter of months, filling roles with varying levels of skills and experience. Fred says, if you are a growth company and you want a diversity of quality people to hire, ZipRecruiter is the best solution out there. In the US, we staff Finder on ZipRecruiter. If you want to find hiring success like Fred did, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ziprecruiter.com slash fire. That's ziprecruiter.com slash fire. Once again, Zip recruiter.com slash fire zip recruiter the smartest way to hire the biggest needle mover in my business funnels they've allowed me to do so much like deliver free courses to my audience resulting in tens of thousands of leads they've also helped me present live master classes to teach thousands of others of how to create and launch their own podcast and they've helped me generate millions of dollars in sales but i couldn't have done any of it as effectively as i have without the right software to help ClickFunnels. With ClickFunnels, you can build sales funnels without a programmer and without knowing any code. And these sales funnels walk your visitors through the sale in a way that maximizes your conversions and earnings. And the great thing about ClickFunnels is that it's not just your funnel building editor. It's also your shopping cart, your email autoresponder, your membership software, your affiliate management software, and so much more. Join over 90,000 entrepreneurs who are actively using ClickFunnels to easily get their products and their message out to the world. Visit eofire.com slash click to start your free 14-day trial today. That's eofire.com slash click. So Neil, we're back and... I mean, what if we have already created all this amazing content? Do we have to translate what already exists or should we just create brand new content altogether? You should consider translating slash transcribing what already exists. It's going to be easier and in most cases it's going to be cheaper than having local people write from scratch um, because the tone, uh, the quality of the work, the tone, the messaging that you're going to want to get across may not be there. Uh, Now, granted, you don't speak the language you don't know if the transcription or the translation is going to be amazing either. But if you're hiring people with good ratings from places like Upwork, you shouldn't have an issue. Now, is SEO the same across the board? I mean, is the SEO identical in Brazil and in Argentina and Spain as it is in the U.S. or is it different? It's identical. It's just literally night and day difference when it comes to how easy it is to get ranking. So it's exactly the same. Like whatever you're doing that's working in the U.S., You're just going to do that and you're just going to have more success just because there's just so much less competition. Like, is that the only reason is less competition or are there other reasons why it's easier? There's just less competition. That's the main reason. What about PR? Like, are you doing any kind of public relations in these new markets? No, none at all. We we started to because the businesses are growing. They're making good money. So, you know, might as well start doing PR and put more fuel to the fire But in general, when we started off, we did very little of that. So what is this PR you're doing? Now we'll get into like magazines and articles and we'll do interviews and all this kind of stuff. Funny enough, they'll try to interview me, but I don't speak the local language. So someone on my team will do the interview on my behalf. Oh, Now, are you actually employing like a PR firm down there or are you just kind of doing a grassroots? We typically employ a PR firm in each region once we start making money and it's 
going well for us. Now, recently on your podcast, the Marketing School podcast, you didn't really have a lot of great things to say about PR companies. Is that kind of based in the US or is that just because you have no foothold and you have to rely on them outside the US if you want some kind of PR? In the US, I haven't had good experience. Um, There's a few people like Chris from PR Serve who's good. There's another guy named Chris Winfield who has like a PR group and he's really connected with reporters. He's good. But in general, I haven't had good luck. And overseas, what we found is if you're from America, it's like 50 times easier to create press than if you're a local. Like they love it, even though you can't speak the local language. And if you hire a local PR firm, it's like fishing with dynamite. And even if they're mediocre, they should be able to get you results. Now, I think you mentioned the reasons why you aren't that impressed with a lot of PR firms in the States is because they're not results-based, but like PR Serve is results-based. Can you kind of talk about the differences there? I met uh, a guy named Chris Barrett from PR Serve years and years ago at a conference. And he had this philosophy because he was in the PR industry for years. And he's like, yeah, he's like, it's so skewed. All these people charge five, ten thousand $10,000 a month retainers and they barely get you anything. So his model was, if I get you press, like I get you on TV, I get you a magazine cover, I get you you know, featured on TechCrunch, pay me money. If I don't, don't pay me anything. Now, he does charge a premium whenever he does get you featured, but at least you're paying for results versus paying for someone's time. Because just because someone works hard and puts in the time doesn't guarantee that they're going to give you results. Fire Nation, it's all about results. I mean, it's worth it paying to get featured on X, Y, and Z. But if you're just going to go on a retainer with some PR company, you're just going to sit there paying 5K a month being like, what's happening? Well, they're probably off trying to get more clients, not trying to get you results because they're getting paid either way. And if they are getting you results, by the way, they're probably doing just the bare minimum to keep you happy, to keep you paying that retainer so they can go on and get even more and more clients piled on to that retainer process that most PR companies use. Let's talk about the reception that you've gotten from locals in these new markets. Good, bad, ugly, somewhere in the middle? All good. They love it. They're, they're so happy to have people from the United States come in and uh, employ more people within their region, uh, teach them new things. It's, they love it. Now, if you were to get out of a car in Brazil, would people recognize your face? Most people, no. By no means. If I go to a tech conference in Brazil, yeah, but other than that, you know, very few people. I think in Brazil we get 360, 370,000 unique visitors a month, so it's a decent amount of traffic. I mean, is that a goal of yours, to get to a place where you can actually step out of your Lamborghini in Brazil and people are like, oh my God, there's Neil Patel. I don't drive, but it could be get out of an Uber. Um, But yeah, no, for, for me... I'm pretty private personally, so I don't care for like fame and glory or any of that. I just want to grow my business and have fun doing it. So let's talk about having fun and growing your business. Let's kind of shift to you talking about what you want to talk about for the next couple of minutes. Like, what do you want Fire Nation to hear from your voice? I mean, you have a daily podcast, a marketing school podcast, which by the way, Fire Nation you got to check it out if you're into marketing at all, because Neil and Eric, they just rap about all topics about marketing. I'm not going to lie. It is number two on my playlist for my Alexa flash briefings that I do on a daily basis. So right after my little Gary B, uh, Gary V spurt of energy, it goes into Eric and Neil talking about their marketing tip of the day. It's short, it's sweet, it's powerful. What are your thoughts, Neil, about podcasting in general? Like, what have you seen from doing this daily podcast that you now have over a million listens per month? You're throwing an event for your podcast listeners. What's the deal? Podcasting is amazing. And here's a crazy part about it. You, you, got in, you started podcasting early on. I don't know how many years you've been doing 2012. this. 2012. Yeah, a long time. Podcasting, in my opinion, all the data shows it still hasn't blown up in the United States. It's growing faster but you give it another four or five years and it's going to be huge. This is the time. Like if you don't have a podcast, you're doing something wrong. Now, sure. If you're a big corporation, yeah, you may not need one, but if you're a solo entrepreneur, it's a great place to start. And you could say, I don't have the time. Well, you could just do five minute episodes like Eric and I do. Um, Or you can do what John does and he's really smart with it. If I'm not mistaken, your process for 
podcast recording is you'll do like you'll group them, right? You'll do You are my seventh of nine interviews today. Exactly, right? So grouping is a great way and you can get more done. And the quality on John's end is amazing with his sound quality, but like look, can't afford any of that. Who cares? Bust out your laptop, bust out your phone, start talking into it. Something's better than nothing, you'll still get results. And they say something like the average medium income from like a podcast listener is like 70 something thousand. I know it's a pretty high number. Uh, I don't know what the exact number is, but it's pretty high. Fire Nation, it's for all those reasons I just can't stop podcasting. I mean, I've done over 2,100 episodes now, but I just love it. I get to talk to people like Neil for 25, 35 minutes. We get to share with you, Fire Nation, and I just get to keep getting better at what I do at my craft, learning. I mean, I'm being educated by Neil on all the things that we've been talking about here today and so on and so forth. Just like you're learning, Fire Nation, I'm learning as well. There's so much power in that. So moving away from podcasting for a second, Neil, like what's exciting you right now? I mean, beyond what we've already talked about, which I know is exciting you, what is something that is really firing you up? I've been riding this whole new wave uh, that I don't think has caught on yet, but I think it's going to be a huge part of the future in which software right now is expensive. And there's a ton of players, but it doesn't cost that much money to build these software solutions. But yet, a lot of tools out there cost 50 bucks, 100 bucks a month. And marketing is getting more expensive. Paid ads keep going in costs. I started to experiment uh, over a year ago, and it was with a tool called Uber Suggest. I decided to release an SEO software, stuff that everyone pays for, and just make it 100% free. Now I burn roughly 200,000, it's a bit under 200,000 a month on the tool. But I found that I generate more visitors from doing that and overall in the long run, although it seems crazy, it's cheaper to do that than it is to pay for ads and my ROI is much higher. That's interesting. And I know that Asana's had that model for a while. Are you familiar with Asana's model at all? It it is, but Asana has freemium. I'm just doing 100% free. I'm like, there is no paid plan. I just give away everything for free. So what is your long-term plan? Like with Uber Suggest, you know, first off, kind of break down what, what Uber Suggest is. So Fire Nation, you should be definitely using this if and when it makes sense for your business, which is like right now today. So break down what it is and kind of what your long-term vision is for this going forward. Uber uh, Suggest is an SEO tool. And you can do a few things. You can put in a keyword. It'll tell you all the other related keywords, how much traffic they get, how competitive it is to rank. So then that way you have more keyword ideas that you can put in your blog post to rank higher. And it even helps you up with like content ideas and topic ideas. The other thing it does is you put in a URL for any one of your competitors. It shows you their traffic, the keywords they rank for, and their top pages. And when you go to the top pages section, you can see all, every single page that's driving them the majority of the traffic, the keywords each of those pages ranks for on Google, the number of social shares they have, and who's linking to each and every single one of those top pages. And now you have a game plan of, hey, these are all the pages my competitors get traffic for, let me create better versions of them, you know, because I already know they get social shares, so people like, uh, platforms like Facebook love it, already know the keywords they're going for, so I can just put in those keywords into my article, and I already know all the people who link to their article, so I can just email them saying, hey, I released something similar, mine's better because of X, Y, and Z. If you like it, feel free and link to it. In Fire Nation, I know that you are looking to build this kind of stuff. Better SEO, more traffic, more lead gen, et cetera, et cetera. And Neil, I know that you're actually a big fan as well of the founder of Backlinko. He talks a lot about that skyscraper effect where, hey, you see... Where some, where some major source is linking to an article, why don't you go and write an article that's 10 times better than that article that they're linking to, then go to that major source and say, by the way, here's an article 10 times better than the article you're linking to. Will you update your link? Because you are obligated to cre- create the best experience for things that you're linking to for your readers or for your viewers, whatever it might be. This is it. Make it happen. And of course, you know, word it in a politically correct way, but that's how you can start using the skyscraper effect when you are creating 10x better articles. Don't just make it a little bit better because it won't be worth their time. You got to make it a ton, crap ton better. So Uber suggests, what's your long-term vision, Neil? 
My long-term vision is just give away more and more stuff for free and make my money from the large corporations. The large corporations. Love that. So let's kind of end with a bang, Neil. I'm going to figuratively pass you the microphone right now. Talk about what you want to talk about. Give a call to action for Fire Nation, and then we'll say goodbye. The last thing I'll talk about, this is a podcast. A lot of you guys here on Fire Nation are doing podcasting, but a lot of you are not, right? And I know your audience, what portion of them are doing podcasts or have podcasts? About 10%. All right. So the rest of the 90% of you guys go and get John's podcast course. You have a podcast course that teaches you about podcasting for free. And you also have a paid one, if I'm not mistaken, that goes even more in depth, correct? True. So that's freepodcastcourse.com, which will give you everything you need to know about creating and launching your podcast. And then when you want to learn how to grow and monetize to the next level, we have Podcasters Paradise. Yes. And if I'm not, uh, technically, I know this one for a fact, uh, being upfront, I don't use Podcasters Paradise, but people on my team have subscribed to it. And I do, I do know we've paid for it. And they're the ones who have helped us grow our podcast. So it does work. And we wouldn't be at a million plus listens a month if it wasn't for you. But for all you guys listening, it's a huge opportunity. We can make six, seven figures a year, probably not seven, but we can make well into the six figures a year just from ads because of a lot of the stuff we've learned from you. Well, man, that is super kind of you to take the time to share that. It really means a lot coming from you, Neil. I'm excited because I'm actually coming up on your show pretty soon here, just like you guys are going to be featured on my show because I went ahead and took that episode about income reports and I'm posting it on a future episode of EO Fire. So stay tuned for that, Fire Nation. Uh, but Neil, closing words. What do you want to say, brother? That's pretty much it. Thank you guys for listening. And uh, I hope you guys actually take action and get that podcast course. It will change your life. It will take some time. Be patient. John's been doing this since 2012, created over 2000 episodes. But that's what you need to focus on. It's just something that I don't know why people don't do it. They think it's so hard, but it's one of the easiest so easy. forms of content to create. <laughs> Fire Nation, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You've been hanging out with NP and JLD today, so keep up the heat. And of course, head over to eofire.com, type Neil in the search bar, and his show notes page will pop up. By the way, the past episodes he's been on Entrepreneurs on Fire will also pop up as well. Neil, thank you, brother, for sharing your knowledge, your truth, for t telling us about Uber Suggest, for, you know, obviously sharing the fact that you have this daily podcast called Marketing School, which Fire Nation, you should be checking out. For that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks. Hey, Fire Nation. Today's value bomb content was brought to you by Neil Patel. And my three greatest strengths are productivity, discipline, and focus. And they can become your greatest strengths as well in just 100 days by visiting themasteryjournal.com. Pick it up a mastery journal and you'll be off to the races. You can use promo code podcast for a nice little discount for listening to my podcast. And I will catch you on the flip side. The biggest needle mover in my business, funnels. The software I use to build my funnels, click funnels. No question. Visit eofire.com slash click to start your free 14-day trial today. That's eofire.com slash click. Looking for a place you can go where hiring is simple, fast, and smart? That place is ZipRecruiter. And right now you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire.